Right, it's going to be kind of this is going to be a video of two parts essentially. The first bit is quite straightforward, and that's um, to any other makers who have got anything for sale at the moment and want to be added to the list of makers for things for sale um, coming up for um, for this Valentine's Day. It's up on my website again. The idea is basically that um, anyone with work ready to sell can fill in a form and then I automatically generate or semi-automatically generate a listing that goes on a specific page. Um, nothing's, there's no transactions through my website. Uh, it's just a way of me having the images for your work and then a link to your website. So the requirements are that you have work ready to send and you have a website to direct people to. Uh, and if you meet those criteria and want to be included in the list, then um, it's kind of a way of, <clears throat> it's initially a way of putting um, my audience in contact with people who had had something to sell um, last Christmas when I had taken as many orders as I could and that was that. Um, so there were people who wanted stuff that I couldn't fit in um, and that's how it started. Um, but yes, I've opened that up again for Valentine's Day, although it doesn't have to be Valentine's themed, but there is a, a kind of like a box that you can tick and it's one of the criteria that you people can use to filter to see whose work they want to look at. <clears throat> so that's the first part. The second part is going to be far, far more niche and very boring to most of you, but I have a theory that there will be at least a handful of people that this is useful for. Um, otherwise I probably wouldn't bother doing this and hadn't initially because I'm not entirely convinced that anyone is kind of there's going to be an intersection of people who are capable of doing this but needed the these tips but probably not too many. So basically a few people have asked me how they can do um, the same thing themselves. So generally it's people who run a small studio or a community group and they have a website and they have a load of makers and they would like to be able to have a little bio or um, a link to the maker's shops or that sort of thing on their website. Um, but no one really wants to do all of that work by hand, which is absolutely fair enough. Um, I don't want to do it by hand. Uh, and they've said, how did I do it? Could I explain it? And the problem is that um, it's relatively straightforward. But I say relatively, the kind of the barrier to being able to do it is that you have to, I'm using Squarespace and I don't know if any of the other shop platforms will allow for both parts of this. But you have to be able to use Squarespace effectively um, and you have to know a little bit of Excel and a little, well, you don't have to know the HTML, but it would help. So essentially, <clears throat> the way it works is that Squarespace allows you to create forms that you can output to a Google Sheets document. It also lets you import products through a CSV, which is some, a file type that you could save from Google Sheets. So you, all you have to do is be able to get the output of the form that people would fill in into a format that could then go back into Squarespace. And once you set the formula up to do that, it's relatively straightforward. But setting the formula up requires the understanding of those two things. Um, but I reckon there will be some people who are using Squarespace who would like to do something like this, as I say, for kind of like community studios or something like that, um, who have set up, they've got a, a Squarespace website, they've probably got a little shop on there for something. Um, you do need the shop functionality, you can't just have a, a plain Squarespace uh, thing. Although, I mean, all, with all of this, if you were this is the way that I decided to do it because I knew how to use these two things and I, I knew I'd be able to get them working together. But if you don't have a shop, you could 
the, the lightly is another way of doing it. I just haven't looked into that because I didn't need to. Um, but I'm going to do a full blog post on this. Again, it's only going to be useful to a handful of people, but hopefully it will clarify some of the things that I'm saying. And I won't attempt to speak HTML at you because I don't think that will work for anyone. But <clears throat> essentially, there are just a handful of headings in the import export product part that matter. And most of those can be populated really simply from this spreadsheet output. So you have to have a URL for each product, um, but it also it has to well, a URL slug. So it's the just the little snippet of the URL that links to that specific part of it. Um, but you can generate that, I'll put the code in, it's really quite simple. You just do, uh, I think it might just be lower, but there's a way of, it's gotta be for, for the, the URL part to work, it's got to be lowercase and not have spaces. And I'll give you the formula for that because that part's straightforward. So the logic here is you, ask the people who are filling in the form to give you a bit of text that would uniquely identify them. In my case, I just called it like shop name or, or business name, I think. Um, but the idea being that everyone would give you their name. So I would put Old Forge Creations and it would be uppercase and with spaces. And then what you do is you'd use that for the product listing title as it is and you would use the lower and then substitute um, formula to swap the spaces for dashes and put everything in lowercase. So that does it for you, that's great, that's automatic. Then the next difficult one is description and this one is where all the complexity lies. So <clears throat> um, I think this might be easier for me to explain in speech for this part just because it's it ends up being so wordy when you try and write it out, which is what I've been trying to do. And I'm not sure that it's going to make sense, but essentially what happens is both the HTML and Google Sheets have some characters that are the same. And you run into this problem where Google Sheets will hijack the, particularly the double speech marks. And it will take that to mean something in the calculation of the formula rather than outputting it in your text, which is what you want. So, the way around this is incredibly simple. <clears throat> what you do is you put any text that would break the formula somewhere else and reference it in your formula. So I have a separate um, sheet so one of the tabs at the bottom that just has any HTML that I need to call on that I can't include as text. And so like you'd have an href and then two speech marks and the speech marks are needed for the HTML. And this becomes important if you wanna to link to things, but the good thing is um, that you can just take the HTML from a listing that works and all you've got to do is take the snippets apart and call them into your formula. So, and that probably didn't make sense unless you're kind of, you're already thinking exactly the way I am. But imagine you make a listing. So this is what I would recommend and I do in the, the blog post. Make a listing that contains everything you want the listing to contain and then export it. And so that is now a listing that's got all the information correctly formatted and you can look at that and see what it does. And what that will do, um, it will have automatically put all the HTML into the description column for that listing and that HTML will function. And if even if you don't particularly understand the HTML, 
you can recognize certain parts. So if you want to have a link to something, you need a specific snippet of HTML that I can't remember exactly what it is at this point, but what you can do is copy that part, put it in your reference sheet on your document, and then your formula to get this working would be the first part of your comment up to where the link starts. Then you would use the link that people give you when they fill in your form, and then you'd use the second part of the text that was in your example exported one, if that makes sense. <clears throat> so essentially what you're doing is you're looking at the parts you want to replace from the example one. So you put a link in there with a, an example link, someone fills in your form and says, I would actually like it to link to old Forge Creations. Um, and so what you do is you just break the text before and after your example link and you say link to this bit, link to that bit, link to this bit. So you'd link to the first part of the text and that would just literally be you just put equals and then pick the cell that that was in and then you would have to um, put an ampersand to get the next part. You do ampersand and then you'd call to the, the new link that the person had given you when they filled in your form, then an ampersand, and then link to the cell where you pasted all the text that came after your original link. And you now have functional HTML. You don't necessarily need to know why it works or how it works, but that would give you the ability to make something that linked and you could then when you just dragged it for everyone that filled in the listing, it would automatically populate the description with a clickable link. Now, I realize that probably doesn't make sense to a lot of you. And unfortunately, this is something where I don't know that there's any way of making it simpler than that. I guess I could do an example spreadsheet. Maybe, okay. I hadn't thought of this before, but maybe I could do an example part that just generated that, and then you could copy that part across to a different spreadsheet. But it's sort of one of those things where I think possibly the barrier to getting this to work is you've got to be able to do that part at a minimum if you want a working link. If you don't want a working link, it becomes incredibly simple because you don't need the HTML. So you don't necessarily have to have a description. If you just had a bunch of makers that worked out of your studio and you wanted to be able to let them put their name up and an image, but you didn't want a clickable link to their website, which I guess a lot of people at a community studio might not, uh, they just wanted to be able to upload images and have their name attached to them. You could do all of this by literally, all you'd need is a form that gathered their name and then you'd use the formula that I said to get the link and you'd follow all the instructions in the blog post that kind of outline this part and they would have to provide you direct links to the images. Now that means it starts with HTTPS and ends with .jpg or .whatever but it has to be the file type and that is because Squarespace has the ability if when you upload a product you give it a direct link to an image it can follow that link, find the image, save the image to your website and add it to the listing. But it can only do that if it's a direct link to an image. If it's a link to a page that has an image on it, that won't work. So if you linked to, for example, Instagram, even though the post is an image and you understand that you want to get that image from it, Squarespace doesn't. So if you're gonna do this part, you have to have the right type of link. And if you click through to the, the text that I've put trying to explain that to people, <coughs> um, you'll see kind of the parts that I emphasize to try and get people to do the right thing there. And it's not necessarily straightforward to people who, who aren't familiar with that concept. But in theory, if they just follow the part where you go to, I would recommend using Imga because it gives you the different kinds of links, but it definitely gives you a direct link. 
if they upload their images there, copy the direct link, um, which will be formatted correctly, and paste it into this box. You can very easily convert that because all you've got to do is take that from the input and put it straight into the output and it'll work. Um, in fact, most parts of this work straight from the input to the output. There's only <coughs> only the description and the page product URL uh, need to be fancy. The rest of it is just, you just literally point it at the, the cell that you want it to bring the text in from. The other one that's quite useful for Squarespace for what I've been doing is the product categories, I think they call it, but it's essentially the filters at the top of the shop page. Um, you can get people to tick tick boxes in the input form, and that will give you the text separated by commas, which is the format that you've got to put it in um, to work as searchable categories. So essentially what I did was I put the price range in, so you have price 0 to 10 pounds, 10 to 20 pounds, and so on and so forth. Um, people can tick whatever price ranges they have pieces in. And then the output is exactly what you would need to then put into the category thing. So all you do is in the category, you just say equals and then click on the, the cell that the text's in. And then when you drag it, it populates for, for each new row. Um, and they are automatically added as categories to that page that people can click on at the top to filter the listings, which is very useful for the way I'm doing it. If, for example, you were a community studio and you just wanted people to have an image page, you could try and think of what categories whoever's viewing the page would want to filter by. So it might be hand building and thrown pieces or whatever just so that people can see each other's work and how it's done or you know whatever categories you want and the point is that a lot of this stuff is actually really straightforward to do so if you set your form up correctly you don't have to do too much work to get the output the way you want it and once you've set it up for one output all you've got to do is just drag each time someone puts a new input in you just select all the formula, drag down the cell, and it automatically does it. Then <coughs> you export a CSV on the, the, the sheet that's correctly formatted, and import that into your shop, and you're done. It automatically does it for you. So, as it currently stands, when I get new people filling in the form, it takes me probably takes me longer to load the page than it does to do all the stuff that I have to do on it. I just literally select across, drag, select across, drag, export. And then to put it into my shop, I click import and select it and done. So it's, it's seconds work, um, slowed down by you know, internet speeds and each part having to think about everything. But realistically, the setting up is 99% of the work and I've made it more complicated than I need to just because I kind of enjoy making things excessively complicated. But if you, if you had a use for something like this and you weren't entirely happy with the whole process, you could do a far more stripped down version of this that would just do the minimum needed to get the information from one to the other. And it's actually, it seems really complicated and it will seem quite complicated when you start but hopefully you'll start to realize quite quickly as you do it that it's not that complicated it seems it the logic is very straightforward you're just looking to try and get your inputs to talk to your necessary outputs and once you bear that in mind what you can actually do is make your when you have um like tick box inputs. What I've done is I've put the wording exactly how I want it to be for the filter, things like that. When, you, when you've done it once, you sort of start to see where 
um, the two talk to each other directly and all you've got to do is set it up right and you save yourself a whole bunch of time and basically the whole thing is like that with the exception of the description and trying to get it to, to write HTML without breaking it. That part requires a little finessing if you want to do anything complicated. But it, again, if you want, <coughs> probably the most likely thing you're going to want to do with it is just have a single link. So if you're gathering a list of makers who are in your studio and you want um, to be able to let everyone upload images and have a link to their own website, say, then what you would just want to do is make an example theme that just literally all it has in the description is a link. So you write the word link, turn it into a, a URL hyperlink linking to a page and export that. And then look at that text and it will have the first part of the formula, it will have the link, it will have the second part of the formula. Take that apart, you've got your three sections and you just need to make it so that all three of them sit somewhere else and you can call them in by saying equals, click on one box, ampersand, click on the second box, ampersand, click on the third box, and you're done. And it, <coughs> it's that simple. You don't actually need to understand what the HTML is doing. Um, test it, once it's working, don't touch it, would basically be my advice and emphasize to people the importance of putting the inputs in right. So images particularly, but also um, the way it seems to work with Squarespace is that it doesn't understand um, that something's an external link unless it has the HTTP or HTTPS. So if someone gives you a link to their website that just starts with www, um, it won't work which is a bit annoying because I would have thought that's something it could understand but I guess because it's reading it as HTML um, rather than anything else it's assuming that it is correct HTML in that particular instance that means you either have to emphasize to people the, the importance of getting that right or you might have to correct it afterwards that is something I have been correcting for people even though I've emphasized it just because um, it's only one in every kind of 30 people who gets that bit wrong. Um, yeah, I think that's more or less it. Obviously, I'll, as I say, I'll do the blog post and I'll try and work out if I can do an example document that you could then reference. Um, I'm not sure that'll work. It might still end up too complicated to make sense to anyone that this doesn't make sense to. Hopefully there are a couple of you that this made sense to and was worth the effort of talking about. Um, and to everyone else who isn't interested in this but does have something to sell and would like to get in front of a new audience, um, the Other Makers page will be up until Valentine's Day and then I need to decide how I'm gonna do it going forwards you know, whether it's something that sits on my website permanently or maybe I do it kind of once every couple of months or maybe just save it for Christmas and Valentine's. I will see how that one goes. I don't have any... This wasn't intended when I set it up to be a, a permanent thing. But I don't mind it being a permanent thing because at the end of the day I have a, a hard upper limit to the amount of work I can make a month um, and I'm at that limit so it's not like it's doing there's no downside for me to having it there permanently other than I'm not sure that people would check back if it sat there permanently I would have to try and maintain um, listing quality essentially I think to a certain extent having it turned off for a bit and then start again is a good idea because people have to re-upload everything and um, it means that the listings always stay fresh. So, I don't know. 
If you've got any thoughts on that, let me know. I suspect what I'll do is keep turning it off and then having it back on for a month or two. So maybe like I'll do a spring one and a summer one and an autumn one and then Christmas and Valentine each time open for a month or so. Um, but yeah, I don't, I haven't fully fleshed this thought out because um, this is the second time I've done it and the first one was just supposed to be Christmas but um, as with all of this if you want to well leave any questions you've got and if you want to see examples obviously the other makers page that's up will show you what my inputs and outputs look like and then uh, I put kind of more details about everything in the blog post.